Hi everyone, this is John. Uh, today we're going to walk through uh, using Docker to set up a tunnel and I'll talk about some of the differences um, when you're using Docker in a Windows environment because it is um, there are some pretty significant differences between uh, Docker for Windows and uh, Docker in Linux. Uh, some of which are, are good things uh, like in terms of like just isolating applications from each other and your um, in your host operating system and so we'll kind of talk about that and then we'll just want, walk through a quick example um, and I'll try and touch off on some of the um, some of the interesting parts of docker and uh, how it's actually a very useful tool for hosting um, applications in in Windows um, it's it's really come a long way uh, Microsoft has done a really good job of um, making running virtual machines on Windows uh, pretty seamless with uh, Windows for subsystem Linux 2 or WSL2 for short and um, and the, the Docker team has built a new environment on top of that and so it's a uh, pretty slick here so you'll see that I have my um, my main window here for Docker um, uh, up front and I've already downloaded the uh, container um, for for packet riot so uh, let's just kind of walk through the commands that you would run through to make it available and so um, once you have Docker for Windows installed, you just want a Docker pull and uh, uh, using PowerShell or just command. And, you know, whenever you have an update, it'll pull down new updates. Um, when you install Docker uh, for Windows, it also includes a tool called Docker Compose. And so what I have here uh, is an example of, um, you know, using the Packet Riot container um, inside a Compose file. And so you'll actually notice that I use Compose quite a bit in our tutorial. So for example, um, this is a Bitwarden tutorial, which uh, we'll try to do a video on soon. But you'll see that um, I actually set up a container um, for the tunnel uh, right over here. And then I set up another container for Bitwarden. Um, and so this way, you know, you can kind of get an idea of, um, of, of Docker Compose, its format. And I typically use Compose to set up like you know x number of services um, that I host and uh, you know if you're looking for some ideas for um, you know different applications to host we we have our tutorials um, which we have um, pretty 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 good number of different applications that are popular but there's also Linux server.io and they kind of maintain a bunch of containers um, the, that are very popular and uh, you could always take a look at them and they have some some really good um, containers that they maintain so what I want to do is um, is kind of create um, a tunnel um, for your um, um, well yeah create a tunnel uh, but we're going to do so in Docker we're going to use Compose and I want to kind of talk through some of these bits here so um, now if you're if you're new to Docker um, this is going to be a lot to absorb but if you're kind of familiar um, you know. Uh, the most ap applications are stored in what they call like a container image. It's pretty much like a static image. It's like a snapshot. It's not quite a virtual machine, but it has all of the files that you need um, to run your application, like all the dependencies. Um, and the way um, containers are normally built is they'll actually create some locations within the container, pretty much like directories or file paths within the container where um, configuration um, files for the application are stored or data is stored. Um, and what that allows us to do is to kind of separate like the application from the data that the application is either using or creating. And that makes it very easy for us to like move containers to like different computers. Um, so that's that's a little bit about um, containers and how they're uh, how they're built basically. And so you'll kind of see like in this compose file, um, I've got I've got a, a section here called volumes, and then I've got these two paths. Um, so I'll kind of show you them right over here. So I just kind of set up uh, a directory called servers and then within that a subdirectory called home servers. And so home servers is where I'm going to set up a bunch of um, different servers, right? This is just an example. Um, and so the one thing that I, I want to do is I want to set up my tunnel. Um, but once you configure it, it kind of creates all these configuration files. You might have some certificates. Um, that are created because of like um, HTTP rules that are using Let's Encrypt, right? So you don't want those files to disappear if for some strange reason, like you have to move um, where you're hosting your containers from like one computer to another, or, you know, maybe something goes wrong. You want to be able to kind of back that data up. And so 
uh, that's what we're doing right here. We're basically mapping this local directory, right? Which you can see here, like it doesn't exist, which is fine because Docker is going to create it for us, right? And we're going to map it to this container, this path within the container, which is slash data. And this is this is just a convention for Packet Right. When you're running the client in a container, it stores all the configuration information in slash data. And so you can check out our docs. If you go to docs.packetright.com and click on the client and just um, select the uh, running as a service and then Docker section, you'll get a, a bit more information on some of the conventions of our container. Uh, you'll see here that I also have like another uh, path. This is one to uh, called www. Uh, this is just sort of like an example directory. I have a small index.html in there. Um, we're just going to use this to like work through our example later. Um, okay, so I kind of explained uh, the compose file. I mean, there's like so much more we can we could talk about um, here, but I really want to kind of run through this example, which is pretty simple, and just kind of show you um, how we use compose in our container and how to set it up. So right now I'm just running Docker Compose. Um, I use the up command and dash D to run um, the compose command in the background. So once it's done creating the containers, it's not going to show us any like output from the containers. It's just going to kind of provide us with the status here that says it created them and um, and it's done. So I could type in Docker PS to see if um, if they're running and they are. So why don't we kind of go back here? So you'll kind of see that like Docker created this directory. And because the client, the packet right client creates um, this configuration file, um, right now it's empty. So I'll just kind of bring it over here. Um, you'll see that now this is actually on our host Windows operating system, right? So now I can actually back this stuff up if I want to. I can move my containers and keep my configuration, right? And that keeps things um, pretty, pretty simple and easy for me to to back up or to just kind of migrate, right? But but right now my container is not in a state where I can actually use it. Um, so let's change that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shell into my container. Um, and so I'll need the name of it. And so I've got the name right here. And I'll just open up a shell using just the simple um, sh, okay? All right, so now I'm in, um, I've created a shell within the container and I want to configure it. So um, this is pretty much just like when you configure a normal uh, tunnel. So we're just going to kind of breeze through here. Um, the, the, the one thing to note that's very important is you want to choose the, the path for your config to be slash data slash config.json. Um, okay. All right, and I will choose that. Okay, so you can see that we've got a, uh, our tunnel's been configured. We're just going to pop out of this container and then restart it. This is necessary because whenever we make configuration changes, the client doesn't realize them dynamically, and so we have to restart the container. And so what we can do is um, our editor just refreshed, and you can kind of see it's been updated, right? So we've got the server we connect to, we've got the host name that we were assigned, and then we've got some keying information um, that 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 is what the client uses to authenticate itself. So let's just kind of verify that it's working here. All right, cool, it's working. Um, so now let's um, let's kind of walk through how we go ahead creating rules, right? And so one thing I, I want to kind of show you is, um, so we're in, um, this is the directory on our Windows 10 host, right? So now we've got this directory that's got our configuration. Um, we could back it up, move it around. We also have this other directory here um, that is just kind of keeping a very simple, um, a very simple um, uh, hello world kind of HTML file. So let's just let's just kind of see what that looks like in the container. So uh, let's see here. We'll create another shell into it. All right, so let's go back to our compose file. So you'll see that I mapped this directory, this www directory into slash www inside the container, right? So if I just type in ls, you can see that it's right over here. All right, and so 
you could see hello world is there and I can cat it and this is our message so what I'm gonna do is I'm um, just gonna I'm gonna add a rule um, that's gonna serve uh, this HTML file and I'm just gonna use the uh, host name that we were assigned and I'm gonna make the web root this um, and so let's just kind of print out the rules one more time and so you'll kind of see here that um, we've got a, a static file root that it's pointing to and um, we can just restart our container all right oh, let's get the container name again This is the one thing that you do miss in Windows is a uh, tab completion. Uh, so we've um, we've restarted our container. We're kind of pointing it somewhere else. So you can see here that now, um, you know, it's basically printing out this hello world message. So, um, you know, what's kind of cool here is that now, you know, you can use any kind of tools that you want in the Windows environment, you know, to modify this, right? So if you're um, building a website, um, you can just, you know, kind of commit, you can work in Windows, right, and build um, build your site as you want to, and then you can just copy and paste um, sort of like the, the the final versions of your website into a directory here. And because we've mapped a local directory in Windows um, to a directory inside the container, um, this is this is what makes that possible. Um, and you know, this is there's a there's some there's some other features here that um, I wanted to mention that I kind of forgot earlier. Is that um, you know you can make some of these paths that you map read only, right? So then this way the container can't actually modify um, these these files that you're copying. So if you want to kind of add an extra layer of protection, you can mount um, a, a, a path, a, a, a directory in your on your Windows 10 host into the container. But you could also say, I want it to be read only. Um, and so that's kind of like a useful feature, especially if you want to try and um, add some 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 layers of, of, of protection to the data that you're mapping into uh, into a container. It can be pretty useful. So let's just um, let's just go here and we'll kind of change this to uh, uh, hello universe. And then when we update it, right? So our, our tunnel is still going out to the internet and back and then eventually serving out this file within our container. And so you could see that this is working. Um, yeah, so this is all I wanted to show. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty easy to set up um, a, a, a tunnel uh, using Docker. Uh, running on Windows, and there are some really neat features about, um, you know, just organizing um, and separating like any any data from the container, right? Which is normally a convention, um, and then mapping it inside of a container so that this way you could work in the Windows 10 environment. Um, you can also protect your data a little bit more by separating it this way, and it just makes it easier when you want to back up or uh, or migrate your container. And so, uh, just wanted to walk through this. We'll actually, um, you know. Put together some more video tutorials showing some applications. Um, there's some really useful examples. So, for example, like if you're running Plex in a container, um, you would definitely want to map your music and your media like this. And it could be um, this could be a path that's um, that's a network mount, right? So you can have a NAS in your environment hosting all your media, and um, you know map it into your Windows 10 host, and then map that into a container, and then make that read only, so that this way. Um, you know your your media or, or whatever the data is um, won't be modified by the container, which is um, which is a pretty neat trick. So uh, thanks again. Um, we'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.